That is a thing I remember, in that fact, is, is that it is stuff. weird okay. and well, stuff. Okay, I'm checking the, the things set up, uh, what do you want to say about what you remember from last time we played yeah. Undertale? Yeah, um, so last time we played Undertale, um, things were going pretty well until they disintegrated into an absolute metaleptic hellscape, which is where we live now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a new name of the, the house you're gonna get, metaleptic <laughs> hellscape. <laughs> oh no. Man. <laughs> Here. I have a story for you when we're not streaming that involves metalepsis, but oh, involves people uh, that no one on this stream knows, so oh, it's maybe. not interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not safe for stream metalepsis story, winky face. <laughs> uh, okay, looks like this is going. Um, test uh, your chat. Okay. Um, looks like we're we're up and running. Uh, let me just check the video for you. Okay, yeah. Cool. Awesome. So, yeah. Have, Wonderful. Have, have at it. Okay. Like, this I'll keyboard click... is backwards. Oh. <laughs> Amazing. I'll quick play for you. Okay, cool. Once more, fellows. Okay. Ooh, very Neil Gaiman. Good way to start off. <laughs> In case you forgot it, then. Yup. <laughs> nah, I've been thinking about this animation and how good it is for like the past friggin' infinite time, guys. I forgot how long that was, actually, though. I think that does really add a lot. <laughs> Nice, nice, good start. Uh, good start. Uh, oh shit. Ah! Go. Oh. Nope. nope. That is still so visually overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially because like I think we were talking about like the simplified aesthetics, right? Of, yeah. Like, of like the pixel art. And right, and I think it's also interesting that actually like the fact that it's not simplified makes it like more confusing, which I think is interesting because like on the one hand it's just like, oh this is weird, I'm confused, but it's also like things are in nice neat boxes and it isn't super obvious where I need to go in the same way that like when your fights are constrained to a box and your options are on like a nice little menu, yeah. like it doesn't freak you out in the same way. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of sort of like the ultimate culmination of that thing I were like talking about before with like like the undying fights of the spears and like how those kind of like bring you in and out of it. But yeah. Running out of monologue. Only one line this time. <laughs> well I guess three. This laps. is very it's like, Yeah. Violence and duration, am I right? <laughs> Same. Proud of that. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> see, new goal, I guess, make it to two fight rounds. What, what is that thing I need to okay. F4, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's an interesting commentary on video games. <laughs> <laughs> and so where when you lose a fight and replay it, it's not, like, because of the metaleptic aspect of it's sort of, it's, uh, wait, actually, I don't know if I say that, um, you know, it sort of isn't, 
Anyways. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, wh- when I was kind of previously talking before about how it was kind of funny that despite the fact that this game in so many ways was very consistent narratively and, like, that things you did, even, like, if you died or whatever, mattered, that, you know, there was this thing where you could just, like, run fights again and again and it, like, wasn't, like, that it happened, you know, like, that was just erased when you died yeah, and yeah. back to the save point. Um, but, but here, because of the kind of metalepsis level, it sort of gets around that, um, which I think, it, like, what I found interesting about that last kind of bit of monologue is I feel like it drives home the question of like if this is always the way that save files have worked and stuff like like how many times actually have the, like, you the player just been like murdering this character yeah. um like i think it drives a kind of interesting wedge between like the stakes for you the player and the stakes for you the character in a kind of fun because like when you like hear that you're like well i'm not actually dying and you're like oh i am piloting someone to their death <laughs> Which oh I yeah, it's like, like a, kind of married on it. Yeah, thing. yeah. Or it's kind of like a. I sort of read the, like this is kind of like one of the things that I think the Stanley Parable does well, right? Is this sort of notion of like using metalepsis to kind of point out to the player the places when they are identifying with the character and the places where like they kind of aren't at, like where the character's goals and their goals are not the same, or the stakes for the character and the stakes for them are not the same. Mm-hmm. What are you eating? Well, Vagel. You want a box of letters? Oh, oh, shoot! Oh. Okay, cannoli break. <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> Take a break from Metaleptic Hellscape for cannolis. Oh, yeah, we are currently in... Oh, yeah, Jacob, I don't know if you've been following too much, but we're at, like, the... something. Uh, <laughs> That's a good description. Yeah. Oh, man. I forgot that, uh, that you got cannolis. That's amazing. I don't know which one you want. You want to split a half or something? Uh, sure. Yeah, there's two of these eclair looking things and there's one chocolate. Oh, exciting. Man, that is exciting. Yeah, I'm gonna grab one of these nerds. Wow. Yeah, Max Pastry is so good. Product placement. <laughs> if you ever come to Boston, Mike's Pastries is where it's at. Uh, I like Bobo's the best, I think. Yeah. I've actually only been to Bobo's like one time, and so I don't, and it was also like a 3 a.m. time, so I don't know if I like think it's good or if I think it's good because it was 3 a.m., so food was good. Yeah. But I thought it was probably pretty good. I like it because it doesn't, it's like, it feels much more family. And less, yeah. like, we are a pastry empire. No, it's true. Mike's Pastry is 100%, like, the, like, tourist pastry baron chef of... <laughs> I, I think modern is even more so. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. Actually, Mike's is older and has been, like, the tourist place for longer. So I think there was kind of a brief while that people saw moderns as, like... The kind of more family or like more good at least alternative to Mike's pastries, oh, and I think that then all the tourists discovered modern and it like went, that went away really quickly. But like I remember like in high school, I had all these friends who were like super snobbish about how like Mike's pastries was for tourists and like oh now they're both for tourists. I, I kind of I would be very surprised if Bova's like yeah. Um. All right, do you want to you want another go? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to put this down. I think maybe I should grab a oh, I'll get thing. you a paper towel. Again. Thank you. Next in the Norwegian slow TV stream of CMS Power Hour, my head of all slowly <laughs> eats an eclair. I feel like this is more of like the, the, the platonic ideal of CMS uh-huh. Power Hour. Yeah. Where, where, we like, where we like barely play a video game <laughs> for two minutes. It's mostly us just on like the yeah. stage talking about... People do this, right? People just stream themselves eating things. Like, that's a thing. Hey, Unsullied Jules. Yeah. Yeah, so we have a viewer now for the CMS Power Hour. Um, oh, if wonderful. If you ever come to Boston, please come to Mike's Pastry, <laughs> which is what <laughs> 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 that's gone from, like, a joke to, like, honest to God, actual <laughs> shilling for Mike's Pastry. <laughs> uh, uh, Unsullied Jules, I don't know if you're in the U.S. or not, but uh, if you're ever in Boston, you should get cannolis, uh, which we are not eating. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, uh... Yeah, no, this is this is sort of, like, the platonic... I, I think this is the platonic I, think this, I agree, this yeah. is the platonic ideal. Oh, can I? Oh, yeah. Can I says, ah, yes, my favorite mukbang streamer is online. That's the, <laughs> that's the Korean term for social eating. Uh, yes? Yes. Um, I, okay, that was a thing. I yeah, was not yeah. just making this yeah, up. Yeah, no, no, it's a thing. Um, I, like, remember this vaguely from, like, some discussion in games and culture. Okay, Unsullied Jewels is in the U.S., so... 
So cool. it's it's you should you should come to Boston and get pastries. It's significantly easier for you than say can I to to come over. <laughs> Where's can I at? Uh, can I is in Denmark. Oh dang. Yeah. Well, you could actually probably go to, like. I actually never had cannolis like in Italy. Mm. I used to, they have some. Uh, I, I, don't know. I don't know if it's Wait, an American. Weren't thing. you in Italy? Though? I was in Italy, but I didn't go looking for cannolis. Oh, okay. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, yeah, maybe. Anyway. But were you in Italy? Uh, I had a conference. Cool. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's some good stuff. Man, the whole thing where you can just go and travel to places, including fun, far away places for conferences, is like. So much going to my head right now. Aren't you going to Canada? I am. Yeah. I'm going to Montreal in like two weeks and I just finished booking the Airbnbs oh, and what has weeks? been the most like disastrous saga of Airbnb booking. Oh. Yeah. I've learned that the Airbnb strategy is just you leave it until the last minute and then all the places that are okay but not booked are the places that look kind of like they're run by hippies and people maybe have a feeling about them like, hmm, I don't know if I stayed here if this would smell strongly of incense or something. <laughs> but if you don't care about that sort of thing, then that's easy mode. Oh, that explains it! Mm-hmm. Because when I, when I, the only time I've been in Airbnb, uh-huh. except for the time when it was like a long-term rental, mm-hmm. uh, because like, Get working in the summer is sort of hard yeah. in terms of leases, but yeah, we were in this dude who was like really into like Tibetan like Buddhism, and there were like the prayer yeah. flags everywhere, and the so, so this makes <laughs> it's sense. It's totally that. This it's, makes sense. Yeah, of like the we- <sighs> anyways. No, like the best Airbnb I've ever stayed in was like this crazy place in St. Louis that claimed it was like an island getaway themed place but my island getaway they meant there were two palm trees in the apartment all of the shells were all the sinks were filled with shells and sand and apart from that it was just like weird multicolor lights going and a sound generator that made vague wave sounds and one giant water bed on like a three bed high platform Go, yeah. Let's go back to metal like the hellscape. Okay. Not, <laughs> not real life question mark hellscape. Don't know. Yeah. Ooh, I also stayed in Airbnb with a guy or the guy had a huge record collection and said that we could play any of his records and we found the Pac-Man Christmas album. So that's the real hellscape. <laughs> right. Yeah, guys, there's a Pac-Man Christmas album. Wow. This is, I appreciate that. This was, I feel like there was a return of chivalry and of <laughs> fighting as well, an activity well, like we can sense, both enjoy. In some sense, Flowey is the, uh, is the player at this point because he controls the safe space. The I guess that's pretty true. Hmm, interesting thought. Though I guess you can also argue that, like, on some kind of level, like, the game also always controls the same states, like, because there are things that you as a player can and can't do with them. Mm-hmm. It's just sort of is, like, both powers. Okay. Oh. Ooh. Got too distracted by that bit of exciting symmetry and didn't pay attention to that fight. Oh, Unsullied Jules, have you not, uh... <laughs> have you, oh... If you missed the last stream, uh, yeah, we... (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Nah, guys, this is like a totally normal video game. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What the hell? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I... I (laughs) I'm kind of curious if that is going to be the answer, though. Like, that if Flowey is effectively the player, like, is some point just like, I'm bored, this stream's over. <laughs> like... <laughs> okay. asks uh when you look for games on steam what do you type in uh so i actually don't really like browse around steam that much i kind of know games already so i don't 
really look for Steam as a like game recommender source. Mm-hmm. Um, I know personally, I prefer like puzzle games more. Um, I I don't really like platformers, and I'm kind of meh about Metroidvanias. Um, I really like roguelikes, even though I'm terrible at them. That's what say. What's the third one you listed? Metroidvania. Yeah. Um, so there was these old games. Like one is Metroid, which is like Samus, mm-hmm. and the other one's Castlevania. And okay. The general thing is like you're exploring this like dungeon sort of area, mm-hmm. which usually has platforming challenges. Ah, okay. Um, but the the main thing is that you pick up equipment as you go on, so you get more powers as you explore. Gotcha. Yeah. It's pretty surprising. Yeah, the the thing I'm sort of uh, can I says I'm pretty surprised when Flowey just pops up like that, even though I saw the last stream, and. Uh, I think mm-hmm. the thing that's really getting me is that, like, I'm really expecting the game over to do 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 when it ends, and just to, like, cut straight to here is yeah. really jarring. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think it's also, it's, it's a little bit one of those things that I feel like it slightly pushes your sort of expectations about, like, what sorts of control you should and shouldn't have over what's on your screen. Like, in terms of, like... You know, like, I mean, obviously, like, it is technically possible for, like, your computer to, like, shut windows that you're not shutting, right? Like, this actually happens, like, all the time in certain circumstances, and this isn't weird to us. Mm -hmm. Um, like, when you have, like, the, like, you know, like, loading bar window when that shuts, you're like, that's not surprising or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that because it's so rare for, like, the video games almost always give you the kind of, like, keep playing yes, no or something, um... Like, it seems almost like there's this kind of sense of, like, that shouldn't be possible. So you're like, you're stealing my game. Like, the, yeah. like I had that open. What are you doing? Um, that I feel like f- is very jarring, even when you, like, are kind of beginning to realize, like, that's actually possible. Yeah, but I mean, I think it's interesting because, like, a lot of games will have, like, a quit option. Yeah. Like, you, you select it, you quit, and then it closes yeah. out. Um, but, like, you don't really need to do this, right? Like, sometimes I do right. all F4 and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so, like, like the thing was the Korean horror comic. Like, right. so I was like, oh, this is creepy. And then she did the, like, weird thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just immediately, like, controlled W. Right. And, like, it got out of it. But apparently, like, that's not people's initial reaction. So some people actually, like, scroll up. And then, like, right. they're all her stuff. And then they, yeah. like, 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 freak out. Um, right. So, I mean, I think, like, you know, the diegetic, like, like, it's expected that you quit the game through the diegesis of still the game venue. Right. Even though, like, you can't... Yeah, like, you sort of have to make, like, this pact, like... With, I've, I've been thinking about this in, like, in terms of this kind of, like, sort of, like, magic circle-y sort of, like, portal fantasy metaphor that, you know, like, in order to, like, you know, when you leave the fantasy world, you, like, you shake hands with all the fantasy characters, and you're like, goodbye, guys, back to real yeah, yeah, life. Yeah, that's, like, the quit button thing. Right, yeah. and I feel like there's something about this that feels kind of like getting unceremoniously booted out of the magic circle, right? Like, I feel like that's part of why it feels very aggressive is it sort of like like this really feels like flowey being like you know like this is my world now like you're only here as a guest like you don't get to like decide like when you leave like i'm just kicking you out of this yeah uh, another thing that i think is interesting is when i played this for the first time um it would default to full screen uh-huh uh, so i don't know why it doesn't default huh. to full screen here um so that like when i played this the first time i was like i just got kicked out of the game and, right like, like like asgore just died and like flowey's like I got this now. And right. Like, so when it was full screen, you know, like the traditional like yeah. opening scene, and then it like fragments into right. metal epic hellscape. It was like very jarring. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah. I also to... definitely feel like the fact that like the game quits on you without you doing anything, but then you have to hit play again. I feel like does create this sort of nice kind of sense of like pulling yourself up off the ground and like scrappily going back at it. Like in the kind of like way that I feel like is reinforced a lot by like those monologues and being like, the what, you're still here kind of stuff. Yeah, this, this thing of, like, are you intentionally letting me kill you is, right. is super... Because, like, I definitely feel like the sense of this is, like, someone, like, repeatedly, like, kicking you off of a mountain and you being, like... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Alright, would you would you like yeah, to, to play again? Okay. Indeed. Wait. Go, go, go. Are you not <laughs> so <this is> <laughs> Jokes on you, this is the CMS power card. <laughs> so it starts being like, you're gonna go clean your room. <laughs> What's interesting is that the full display shows up because oftentimes, like for bosses, they have like a courtesy, like you know, oh, just skip the opening animation. But no, yeah. this is driving in the point. Yeah. Right.
good. I think those things are always the things that get me. So cool. Again? Yeah, yeah. I feel like sometimes I hit F4 before that dial. Yeah, I think it only lets you do it. Like, so I think the, the Undertale yeah, logo showing up, I think it's good. It, it gotcha. I really like the way this sort of like descends by like bubbling down. I think that that's In time super. Was the, the, yeah. The strobing. yeah. Right. I think that is super effective for the menacingness of this. <laughs> Yeah, watching you playing this, I'm, I'm thinking that it is a rather non-obvious that like there is that this is even defeatable. Yeah. yeah, like I almost feel like this is a little bit constructed to like. Like I actually feel like I'm still not convinced this actually is defeatable. Like I kind of yeah. at this point I'm like I feel like I mean I feel like I'm a little bit convinced because I have the ex like the external knowledge that like we're playing through this for a reason and that you're like, hey, you know, like, like, I'm like, I feel like you have become the Satan, stay determined in this game. I mean, yes, yeah. you lovely viewers have become. Like, that's true, right? Because right. I've been like, like, I wouldn't invite you into my house and be like, let's play. Like, yeah, maybe I, I would. I don't know. Let's lose like, this game for two hours. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's also interesting because when I played Undertale the first time, I also had a friend who was like, what, you've never played Undertale? Like, yeah. Because uh, I have a video game, like, best friend from high right. school. And so she was like, wait, you haven't played Undertale? We are sitting you down right here. You are playing Undertale. And so I yeah. think, like, it was, like, around midnight when I got to this point. Yeah. And I was just like, what? Wow. Oh, you just played, th played through it, like, in one go. Yeah, like, I played through, Dang. like, all Undertale in, like, one go. That's uh, amazing. It was, like... An experience. Oh, man. yeah, I can imagine. Especially because, like, there were some parts that were like, like, what? at like 5 a.m. And I was right. like, oh my god. And she was like, no, you gotta keep playing. Oh, dang. If that's uh, a lot of this game, then. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm kind of curious, though, like, like when this game first came out, right? Like, before there was, like, that much of a community that had played through it to be like, no, there is game beyond this. It isn't just, like, like, I'm really impressed also by the people who go and dig through the game's source code to try to find right. uh, more understanding through it. Because there is sort of, like, a whole yeah. side plot. And I guess um, I feel like that's the thing that's a little beautiful, like, about games, is that, like, games have just become, like, so easter eggy and, like, complicated genre, and people are willing to sink so much time in them that you can do stuff like this and know that, like, maybe early on there are going to be a couple players that get to this and are like, well, that's cool, but I'm pretty sure, like, that's the end of this now. Um, But that you, like, can rely on there being people who will all Always look at something and be like, guys, keep doing this, like, yeah, or like go and look in the source code or whatever. Yeah, um, I've also started uh, doing like watching a let's play of Earthbound, from, uh -huh. like one of my favorite um, let's players, and it's interesting because he it was his first game that he LP'd um, back mm -hmm. in like uh, ten years ago, and now he's replaying it, and he's like, there's a ton uh -huh. of stuff that we have like just like discovered and they're all like little Whoa. easter eggs like you can use a second player controller to like control some aesthetic things Whoa. but it's like really minor but That's people so are cool. still playing with it and figuring out and this this game is like drawing a lot from earthbound mm -hmm. um uh which is oh uh, no earthbound i think yeah it's uh it's a uh, yeah it's like a cult classic mm -hmm. um cool. can i says uh Oh, Cam, I said, it's pretty funny. I saw this game on Steam early on, and I just thought it was another generic indie RPG <laughs> kind of thing. Which, like, like you know, in all the screenshots. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I definitely feel like that's also kind of an interesting sort of, like, relying on people to sink the time into something to discover why it's interesting. Like, I actually often kind of think about this with anime, and about how, like, I feel like it, with anime series, it's much more possible than like with Western animation for a show to just market itself as something that it totally isn't and something more boring than it is. Like, um, 
So I was like talking about Monica earlier because like this the aesthetics of yeah. this really remind me of Monica. But it's really interesting that you know like if you look at like literally any piece of marketing for Monica, like any of the like box covers for the DVDs, like any of the posters, like any of yeah. the like advertisements, any of the previews, they all just sell Monica as like a normal magical girl anime. Like there is no yeah. indication of like oh it's a magical like anime girl anime, but yeah. And you just kind of, like, trust that, like, there will be people out there who will watch a magical girl anime, even if it's just a magical girl anime, such that, like, and not just, like, someone's gonna watch the first episode and be like, oh, but that someone's actually gonna watch, like, like four episodes of it to, yeah. like, get to the kind of shit gets real bit of it. Because there's no zombie high school one, but after the first episode, it's yeah. very clear. But I'm also thinking about, um, like, what K-Kim, K-Kim showed me a whole bunch of Steven Universe, uh -huh. and it was like, oh yeah, the first season is, like, First half of the season one is complete nonsense, and then it gets to like, oh, things make right. sense because it's no longer slice of life. Like, yeah. Nonsense. And I'm kind of curious if that's like a thing that like, maybe like, even kind of like, as like Western animation takes off as like more of a genre, like if that's becoming more of a thing that you can do, like people trust it a little more. But I mean, I think even no, I don't Steven know. Universe is not a complete subversion like Madoka is. Yeah. Um, right? Like it's, uh, it's like, oh, like it's. It's going into it's just slice of yeah. life to like actual hero narrative right. thing. I think the other biggest one would probably be Homestuck. It would probably mm -hmm. be the most Western example I can think of of like yeah. really subverting what this is, but that's also different because it's just this sprawling Yeah. I also feel like God. Homestuck just goes through, like, so many possible what this is is. Yeah. Like, I feel like Homestuck starts off as, like, already kind of, like, a ways into this sort of strange MS Paint adventure thing that he's been doing, you yeah. know, and, like, only kind of gets weirder from there, but I feel like Homestuck already is, like, a weird spin on, like, Bard Quest or whatever, which is, like, already, That's... like, a weird spin on, like, tax adventure games. Can um... uh, I says, I didn't think of it as any more than the generic indie RPG but one of the ton of YouTubers I was subscribed to began playing it left and right. I knew it had to be something more than that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's yeah. it, right? Like, you've got the people who, like, actually just want to watch Magical Girl. Right. And then be like, what? And they yeah. tell their friends. And then it becomes, like, this, right. this grander thing. And I'm kind of curious about this notion, like, that actually is something that depends on fan communities and being able to communicate. That, like, you need to, like, be aware of the other YouTubers. So when some random person, like, you don't know plays a game, but they find out something interesting about it, like, that information gets around. I think that's interesting also, because, like, I definitely remember when my friends were going through their cringy anime phase yeah. in middle school, right? It was definitely, like, they were sort of part of this community and, like, getting knowledge from there. But for me, who was just talking to my one nerdy anime friend, yeah. it was just like, okay, I guess this is a thing. You know, yeah. Like, which, which I guess it also points out in this game of, like, the anime, it, like, anime uh -huh. is referenced constantly yeah. in, in, in the in-game universe as well. Yeah, yeah, that's why, this is actually partially why I think that, like, I definitely think Toby Fox maybe likes Monica, because, like, I feel like both the combination of, like, those aesthetics and the fact that it's, like, a very similar kind of way of, like, framing a subversion with, like, giving people very little information up front that it's gonna get weird. Uh, Earthbound, yeah, I, mm, Earthbound is also an interesting game, because, like, uh -huh. now that I'm actually watching this, and I know people have say, it's been saying Undertale is, like, heavily inspired by Earthbound, there's, yeah. like, little things that are references. Like, the, the same pixel art for the gifts that you get uh -huh. um, is the same as in Earthbound. Oh, interesting. And also the, the throwaway line of, like, oh, kids wear stripes. That's so you can know their kids. Like, all the kids uh -huh. in Earthbound wear, wear stripes of, like, the main protagonist. That's funny. Um, Did y'all try the Mike's Page? Yeah, yeah, we've been shilling yeah. for Mike's Page. Yeah, we've been, we've been selling Mike's Page on stream. I'm glad y'all enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks, for, thanks for buying Thank them. You. Yeah. Oh, um, Harvard. Yeah, nice, nice. Good good time to pick it up. Uh, what was I saying about... Oh yeah, uh, the other thing about Earthbound is that, like, right now, like, I know, I know, like, a lot of the endgame things, uh, that, yeah. like, it gets really dark, um, but, like, even now in the early game of, like, you're a kid, and you live in Eagle Land, and you're going yeah. to the big city, like, it's already, like, there's some kind of, like, dark undertones in this already. Right. Um, and, hmm. and, yeah, but... Earthbound is also Eastern because it's from Nintendo. Interesting. There's also actually like a huge um. There's actually like a huge controversy about like getting it ported to the U.S. Uh -huh. because like they tried to sell it as like really quirky writing style and everything. Yeah. Um. But like a lot of people weren't used to those styles. Uh -huh. JRPGs were kind of going out of fashion. Right. So people weren't like sinking in the time actually to experience huh. it. Uh. And now like later on people have like because of the fan community it's yeah. like come back out. But, yeah. Cool. Um, All right, run right. this a couple more times. Oh. Nope. Oh, nope. Yeah. 
Do we have anything better to do? I mean, we the discourse. Yeah, it's, it's... When did something better? <laughs> I think that's interesting, though, because whereas the whole, like, kind of, like, do you enjoy dying thing is definitely, like, kind of very hard of the character. Like, I feel like that's almost kind of designed to, like, hit a player a little bit more, because, like, probably, like, this this kid who has, like, had their entire world ripped th from them by this Eldritch Flower business, like, definitely doesn't have anything better to do than try to get that back. But, like, I personally might, you know, yeah. and might even be experiencing some guilt about, like, playing a video game rather than doing those things. In fact, this is a pretty classic thing people say about video games, right? Like, oh, you're wasting your time playing video games. I feel like the thing I hate there is when you get, like, so overwhelmed by things that you lose track of where you are. Yeah. And then, like, that totally gets ya. Again? Yeah. I also like the physical exertion of having to read yeah. the pass every time. It's definitely, like, a... You know. Right. And switching controls definitely is interesting. Yeah, I feel like this is actually what I really like about the kind of slate bounce, because I feel like it really gives you a kind of feeling of weight. Mm. Yeah, Or a hitbox or any of these things. Right. Like, I'm looking at the fire and, like... Yeah. yeah. Right, and I think that's partially because they're in a different style, and so you can't just assume the hitbox is, like, the normal kind of pixels you see. Yeah. How many times is that that I look for? Five? Something like that, yeah. Has this horror movie business always been going on on the screen and I've just not been looking at that because I've been so busy looking at dodging things or is that new? Yeah, that's always been on the screen. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just really amazed I didn't notice that until that round. Yeah. Do you want me to jump in? Also? No, this is, this is good. I'm actually kind of... Yeah, can I? I'm not sure if we're doing that kind of playthrough and like I'm also not sure if I'm good enough to get past that boss as well. Um, mm, Meower, boss. Meower says, yeah, uh, the final boss, or debatably, some kind of final boss, some kind of post final boss. We still have your kill. Yeah, still under tail. It gets real weird around now. This guy did a lot of good. <laughs> this guy, this boss, or this guy, the guy who made this game. Ah, that kind of thing. This guy did a lot of anime. If I played this when I was twelve, I would like. Die. <laughs> okay, so, so so how we got yeah. how we, we got to this point is that um so we finally met like the king and like we beat the king <laughs> and he's like oh do you want to like if you kill me then you can go to your world but like or do you want to stay so you you spare him and he's like oh you know we can be a family we can yeah. do all these things we can open Christmas presents and then the flower comes and, and kills Christmas him Christmas presents with the same pixel art as yeah <laughs> and, and then the flower comes and kills him. And is like, you fool, I told you, it's kill or be killed. And then he kicks you out of the game. You yeah. just come out to here like we are now. And then and then when you click play again, you it like glitches out your game and you start going against this dude. I would shit my pants if I was 12. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah, no, it's really, I think like, like, when I was 12, Metalapsis scared the hell out of me, definitely. Oh, yeah. Like, I feel like I was very susceptible. Like, that idea of, like, technology not behaving the way it was supposed to was, like, the spookiest shit. 
Like, I mean, I think that's why so many middle schoolers are, like, real yeah. into this game Right. Well. And I think that's, like, majorly a it's thing. like when you watch Inception when you're, like, 13. Yeah. yeah. Right. And you're like, mind so blown. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I was 12. I was still the kind of person who, like, when I read a scary book, I, like, you know, like, had to, like, put, like, a, like, heavy thing on top of it when you closed it to go to bed so, like, the book wouldn't escape and get you. And I feel like, like, this would have, like, yeah. 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 Like, I feel like this would have, like, hit that exact instinct so hard. So, Meower says, um, like, can I, I saw an early stream of Undertale and thought, oh, it's just an Earthbound clone, so I'm heavily inspired from it. Um, uh, so, he didn't, or, or maybe that one streamer, like, like, he didn't know what happened until uh-huh. they stuck it out till the end and was like, oh, cool. Yeah. But, like, I, I, the one thing I thought was interesting was, like, throughout this playthrough, mm-hmm. um, you've been, like, kind of picking up on, like, a lot of the themes of, like, yeah. fighting through friendship and things like that. Right. Which yeah. Is, which, like, because, like, it's really easy to say after the fact, after, it's, like, this really weird climactic thing happens, like, oh, I can post-justify everything that happened, but, like... Right. Or yeah. it's, like, I mean, it feel like it'd be easy to be, like, well, this is the whole point of Undertale, you know, like, the message it is, like, the entire deal of it is this metaleptic thing. But I think that it's sort of interesting, like, when, when people were all telling me to play Undertale, I didn't really know why it was interesting to them. Like, I knew, like, a little bit, like, some of this kind of, like like, kind of, like, your choices really matter kind of thing was a yeah. reason people liked it. But I think I didn't really know, like, that people were obviously telling me to play it because they're like, Mahidabel, it's metaleptic weird shit, you know? Which I think is probably why, like, most people who are like, shit, man, you gotta play Undertale were actually thinking of. But I think it is that interesting thing where when someone tells you that something's gonna be interesting to you, you, like, do have to try out all the ways it might be interesting to you with the information you have. And I feel like that was actually a really good way to go into this because, like, I wasn't trying to relate everything to that. I was just sort of trying to figure out, like, is this fighting through friendship thing, like, the reason people thought I would like this? Oh, that's, and... that's interesting. Um, I, I think, like, when I brought up Undertale to you for the first time, it was for, like, narrative weirdness. Yeah. Um, and less, like, metalepsis, but I guess metalepsis is inherently <laughs> narrative, narrative weirdness. weirdness. So, um, yeah. Again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, man. Let's go. Man, they're really hammering on that. I feel like that's definitely a point also, that if I did not have some sort of weird external faith that maybe something else would happen after this because we're still here, I like, feel like the fact that's repeated like a little bit is like... Well, I mean, I think that it was interesting because I felt the thing that was sort of rewarding for this boss was that the dialogue was changing. Right, that's what I mean is that I think like when it doesn't, like I think that really like maybe like hits a kind of like a, you know, I sort of hit all of the options for this, like... Or, you know, like, there's not that, there's not even, like, the reward of the new dialogue for going into this fight again. Like, so you have to be going on, like, some other sort of... Determination! Exactly. Oh. I hate those hands at the end of those things. They're so creepy. Okay. Let's just... Keep on going. But yeah, I also liked your comment of like, is this still Undertale? It's like, <laughs> you know, and then there's the cheeky little Undertale at the beginning. Just, yeah! Just to remind you that, yes, this is still Undertale. Right. And that's kind of funny because that's like a little bit sort of baked in as an affordance. Like, it has a loading screen, has with a loading screen, because like, obviously, it like, doesn't know what to load, like, but... <laughs> But yeah, I feel like it does make this also look like a kind of like, a sort of like, good like, twisted mockery of the game that Flowey has taken over. Like, you know, like, it's, it's Undertale! This is what Undertale is now! Yeah. I think it's like especially nasty that this doesn't pause for you to do the fighting thing, that like, you know, like, when you hit fight, like, it's still throwing stuff at you. Yeah. Um, like, there's none of that kind of, like, uh, you know, like, and I will strike the very first blow, and then you will strike the very next blow, kind of, like, uh, like, that that seems like a chivalry thing to me, also. Can I says, the thing that's great about Undertale is not how it's just interesting with this whole meta-narrative, but how under all of that, there's also a fun story with tons of likable characters. Right. I think that's actually very real, and I feel like that's one of the things that makes the main difference to me now between, like, things that I think are, like, just kind of metaleptic bullshit for the sake of it, and like things that use metalepsis well. Especially, it's like, yeah, especially like, Stanley Parable. Yeah, being we're kind of talking about that with that. Yeah. Like, I feel like when I was kind of in middle school, like I sort of thought metalepsis was like enough to carry a plot, right? You'd think like, wow, the metalepsis is just so weird. Like, it doesn't matter if there's anything interesting going on in this game. Yeah, but I feel like now, like, you know, like 
I kind of feel like it has to be like, like, you don't care about the substance. There's no reason to care about the weird form things you're doing with the substance. Because, like, fundamentally, you're not going to have, like, that emotional connection to the characters and you're not going to have, like... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think this is the difference between weird ICA exhibit. Right. A, a nice ICA exhibit and operationalizing it in the, in the, <laughs> of the era. So. Amazing. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Ah, garbage. Got it. Thank. I think that honestly, the fact that you have to go through all the effort of full screening it and then also and then it boots you out just makes this seem even more like scrappy and ridiculous. <laughs> I think a lot of things about the way that we have this set up, like having to read over the mouse and all those things, really uh, add. <laughs> Wait, so I thought the bony dude was the main boss of the flower. Uh, no. Not in certain places. Okay. Yep. Ooh. Sounds like spoilers. It sounds like spoilers. <laughs> I feel like I have experienced a spoiler. <laughs> This thing is interesting because I think it's one of the hardest things. It's actually one of the only things that gives you a hitbox. Warning. What? Ooh, up, up, up. Okay. <coughs> Slow Ooh, interesting. Yeah, that thing. You called for help. Sounds like the uh, Kill Bill thing. Oh, the ding! Oh, yeah. Oh. You called for help. Wow. I have a feeling it's not gonna be helpful this time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All those likes. What are you doing? Okay. Uh, I was being distracted by making start to comment for you. Whoa! That was a new. What? <laughs> do, do you get what was happening? Yep. Though? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Auto saves. Yeah, that's why. Well, he controls the save files, file, but I guess maybe not so much anymore. What the freaking frack is this? This is incredibly. Uh... No! Oh, no! 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 I'm no! No! I'm trying to go. Oh. It's running. You're dead. No. I believe in me. Yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> I don't believe in me. Um, Meower says, I would say objectively for Earthbound, uh, especially when considering the the time it was released, it's a pretty average JRPG. But the quirky nature of the writing is mm -hmm. really what made it, which is kind of again going yeah. for like function. Right. Oh, that's the uh, the opposite thing of not just like. A pretty boring form, but like yeah, interesting. I also feel like the sort of quirky writing, or at least like some of that, is like very important Undertale. Also, that like I think it's it's cool that like the universe that Undertale like isn't just kind of like a like normal serious take on an RPG. Like it's got all kinds of other like kind of weird like jokier parodies of the kind of RPG thing. Like even within this kind of larger and more with a point deconstruction stuff, right? Like it's still got like the weird like the Temi stuff and all the weird like yeah. dog obsession and like yeah, yeah. Okay, this got interesting um, though. Yeah, can I is pointing out because we've been we've been hanging out on the Steam screen for so long. Yeah, he's like, wow, full length TF two cover crossover. That seems interesting. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, here we go. Anyone spying on other games? Yeah. <laughs> then... oh. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, the, the no build up. I didn't do that. Yeah. Oh, it's because I have a save file. Probably. 
so I can skip that thing now. Wow, that's very boring how fast that goes. Why is this one of his eyes blue? I don't know. I think because each of those things gets a color on that thing or Just let's not miss the message. Fuck off! I can't go that fast. It actually goes faster than it is a physical constraint. So maybe I have to like move upwards with this. Yeah. Well. Dead boy. Yeah, I really expect to hear the, the ending, the game over music. Yeah. Oh man. I think it's also just in like, the last thing you see is just like that shatter, because I think like that also kind of feels a little bit like the way like the frame collapses. <laughs> Sure, one could get some sort of commentary on the design, plant, and mechanical nature of Boy's final form as a holy blending of technology and the horror TV. Whatever, the horror TV. I don't really understand what's up with the horror TV. I guess it's kind of aesthetic. It is also partially a Earthbound reference to the final uh -huh. boss in Earthbound. Oh, interesting. Is he also a horror TV? Um, yeah. Like, like, uh. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll be quiet for this part. Okay. Why do I have such a hard time with that? Uh, but yeah, the, the the final boss for Earthbound, um, I think one of the yeah. the urban legends about it is, uh -huh. or, or maybe actually is, um, the creator saw uh, a rape scene uh -huh. uh, in a movie when he was really young and this traumatized uh -huh. him. Yikes. And he tried to make the boss like have uh -huh. sort of like that same feel. Yikes! That's frightening. Oh, I just realized the hands at the end of the bottom. Yeah, yeah, right? They're so bad. I hate them. I think, like, the fact that they're not weapons and they're just, like, hands actually really makes them worse. I think they're kind of No. Okay. Not fucking up. That's what we're doing over here. <laughs> and not fucking up the hill. I really like this, like, horribly shrill, uh, like... Yeah. Oh, yes! yes. Okay. I think that's maybe it. And then just move I think this might thing. have saved beyond that, but we'll see. initially thought the hitbox then was much bigger than they were. Um, hmm. I don't hmm. know. It looks like it's working on my end. Sorry, can I? Uh, okay. <sighs> my knuckles go open. Yikes. From punching someone. Um, I think when I use my shoe, I just got to Oh, yeah. But the cow was built up and just cracked. Ouch! Yeah. Fight! Yep. Yoga mat. Yeah. 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 Ugh! Oh, oh whoa! What? what? The fuck? I don't even know what these- They're finger guns! I hate that! 
Their finger guns. They shoot off their fingers. Giving me, like, weird yellow submarine flashbacks. Oh, my God. And I watched the Elsa Marie the other day, and that movie did not get less weird from being <laughs> old. Like, I feel like I thought that maybe, like, being older or understanding the Beatles or understanding rock understanding. references or understanding anything would make that movie make sense to me, and no, it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> I would be like this movie. Right now, Do the bombs have like small flowers on them? Yeah, I think they do. <laughs> That's really silly. It's interesting. I think I thought before that the uh the different souls helping you out was triggered by like you getting very close to dying and not by like surviving for a certain amount. Maybe I was just good at surviving for a certain amount and <laughs> not. I think the attacks are changing up. I think you got used to something. Yeah, yeah, I think that's true. Like, these things are pretty easy. Yeah, the finger guns. That's me up. Wipe. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Ah. Hacking. Yeah, I think, you're, I think it is you're getting better yeah. at this from... through this incrementally at least like yeah because like the using... same points choke up so much like that, that's weird it's because he's using the same thing right. right so like yeah But it's also interesting to have save points, like, like, because under Hill, so many of the save points are outside of fights, so you just do the fights wholesale. That's something exciting about having, like, save points kind of, like, choke up during a fight. Like, yeah. you can... Like, the really the only thing that's kind of like that is, like, that thing where you can skip that first section of the Metaton monologue if you... Oh, yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Is this? Right. Okay. Oh, oh, I guess. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yes. Okay. What even is the friendly equivalent of hot whale? Eggs. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. eggs make more sense. I'm not sure anything makes more sense here, but okay. I feel like this is a funny kind of equivalent to the thing that we were doing before of like, you just kind of like casually like drop out of the kind of like horrifying stuff of the game to do CMS discourse. And now instead of CMS discourse, you've got like donuts and happiness, but. Yeah. I know Under the Tale is meant to be PG, but I wish at the end of Pyrus's date there was an option to bone him. Hey, Put that in a book of skeleton puns. <laughs> Interesting that the mechanical aspects of the game representing perhaps the game Rebel. 
um, 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 right, um, um, um. I have some questions. <laughs> Literally, oh, it's because I my finger was shifted from the buttons. But yeah, if we're talking about fighting with friendship, the like dualism of this is pretty interesting. Yeah. Also, Meower has a clarification about the Earthbound thing: is that uh, the, cre the the guy who created it probably didn't understand what was going on, so it probably like question mark was not a risk scene. Okay. Uh, but it's still like the impression of like that yeah. emotional like freaking right. out, like maybe create that final boss. Yeah. So. Interesting. So how explicitly does the final boss look like that, or is it just kind of like a really creepy and sort of like... Oh, he looks pretty similar to... He doesn't look exactly like the horror TV, but he looks pretty similar. Uh-huh. So what, what's the different kind of art on Earthbound like? Uh, sort of. Yeah, okay. But he doesn't look like this. I'm, I'm just saying like the horror... Yeah, thing like the horror like the, Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, 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 okay. But yeah, like this whole soul segment is like pretty clearly the like fighting friendship like, right. duality. Yeah, I think it's kind of right. There's sort of this kind of notion of like uh, that you like in this world where like all the fighting is just like explicitly like really intensely representing like. And they're like definitely turning this into like the. No, it's not turning like. You're helping me here because I'm Thumbs not good at this. Eggs. Or maybe donuts. I think or maybe eggs. an eyeball. I forgot. Oh, no. <laughs> I want more eyeballs. Wally's defense dropped to zero. Interesting. Much larger. Yeah. Oh no! This can't be happening! Thanks. The idiot. No step reload. Ooh, 
boy, what a shame. <laughs> It's <laughs> a good face. Also, see, like outside of the screen. It's a really like, good face. Oop. Rainbow. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. oh boy. Because I'm not answering any of these questions, but just proceeding to stand like just like like it's not about like being like because you're fine, but we like, just taking the mercy action. that that's kind of interesting from the flowey is now the player perspective in terms of like i've ever seen like no one's like taking the runaway option though like the like flee no, is an option that you have yeah and uh meow are pointing out that not only are you a safe state of user but flowey was also a safe state of user yeah, yeah that's true can i is still making skeleton fun okay good Ooh, weirdly i'm back here Ooh. Huh, medicine credits. <laughs> wow, I'm so glad that Washua was somebody's individual contribution to this. Of course, there's a Japanese localization. Freaking weebs. Freaking weebs, man. So now Lauren worked on this. I'm just going back. <laughs>
Oh good. Glad to know she's still in the same Hey Sans, who are you talking to? Who's the human? to know you're still like putting this evil face to good use even in your somewhat reformed state though. Ooh. Undertale. Undertale. Seems like I've been challenged to a speed run by a character. <laughs> you only take the challenge? Yeah. Okay. I right. can yeah. Undertale. So I feel like this is like Solidly the end of a run. Yep. Yeah. You got the credit scene. You got. You found out what happened to the characters afterwards. You found out that you're gonna be hunted <laughs> as soon as I figure out how to get out of here. Yeah, yeah. I somehow don't have a lot of faith that'll ever happen for them. So. <laughs> TBH, not actually sure run die would be good at that either. Anyways, that's interesting. And I guess if I, it's like. I guess had heard the notion of doing Undertale as a pacifist run was unsure if that was just like a thing people had decided to do for funsies or to see what happened, but it's interesting that I didn't realize it was like so obviously in the game that like the game was like, can you do it? Yeah, and also like that it's Flowey who yeah. suggests it is a little weird. Yeah. Because like it does not have your best intentions. Yeah. yeah. I do think I don't really understand Flowey and why he's so into murdering everything. Like, who hurt you, Flowey? Hmm. Probably, like, me in another run or something. <laughs> but... <laughs> Probably, like, me in this run, but... <laughs> because also, if you decide to kill Flowey, I don't I don't think he would be able to come back Yeah, you. that's true. So I guess you have to be, like, a little bit pacifist for it to suggest to you that you should be doing more pacifism. Yeah. Yeah, like, I, don't, I, I don't actually know because yeah. um, I spared Flowey and I got a different uh -huh. response of what to do. Interesting. Yeah. Do you think that it's based on different actions and other things? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because also, like, this isn't a spoiler, but, like, that phone call at the end? Yeah. Like, depending on what you do, it right. go differently. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Nah. What? He, he asked them many times to be axe murdered. Yeah. And it broke his it broke his brain that somebody might not want yeah. to kill. No, you are a better person than I am. The fact that I'm a better person is because I was appreciating the moral satisfaction more than the immediate violence. <laughs> you are a person with better self-control. <laughs> <laughs> hey, as as Twitch chat says, meow and can I? You want the true ending? Try again passively. Undertale. Martin Luther King. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, feeling like I want to do like a little bit of a like, having completed the run thing before like, yeah, immediately taking this off again or anything. Like, what's interesting is that we can't, uh, 
is that they didn't quit us out and so, yeah so we'll just right like it's, it's, it's weird actually like in some ways it's kind of like like after all of your previous interactions with like flowing closing out of the game there's like some way in which like flowing giving you a kind of very open challenge there and like leaving the game open and just being like can you do it keep playing it's kind of interesting yeah yeah cool Undertale. 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm like, so I'm not sure I want to go, like, immediately into doing, like, another run of Undertale after this. Like, I would be down for, like, taking, like, a tour through Light Break and taking a tour through some other video games or some stuff. Or get oh, okay. anything else you want to do on the, the Power Hour before just... Oh, before going Undertale, Undertale, Undertale again? again? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we could go back to the other- Because I think that especially if, like, a lot of the stuff is going to be similar, right? Like, you know, like, especially because I played that last run pretty close to Pacifist for a lot of it, and so I think if I, like- You did, you did axe murder some dudes. Well, I literally axe murdered one ice cap because I tried to steal his hat and it was a mistake, you and also... I attempted to axe murder a ghost who couldn't die. You also killed Toriel. Oh, yeah, I guess I did do that. Yeah, which is why the yeah. skeleton was like, I knocked on the door, but nobody answered. Yeah. Because you killed Toriel. I, like, low-key forgot I did that. Oh, my God, that's, like, a big part of it. Yeah, that was maybe not a super chill thing for me to have done. Yeah, the, the, the weird part was that, like, El Chat was, was, like, Chat was, like, playing, like, pressing F for respects, and then someone who hadn't seen the game before was like, wait, you just killed Toriel? Like, she can die, you just killed her, and then, like, and you yeah. were just like, eh, CMS discourse. Uh, no, man, it was my young murdery days when I was playing this, like, a real video game. Oh, my God. A real video game? <laughs> but, yeah, you, you, you killed- I know, probably Emma told me to do it. <laughs> yeah, you killed Toriel, you killed a couple of, like, snow peoples, and then- yeah. Yeah, I, I was and thinking around kind of peak murdering around Snow People's Land, and I regret my actions. Uh, all right, I want to... communication on Steam has been rebuilt. Ooh, um, well, it'd be useful if we were using that medium. Okay, let's see. Uh, we could go through I more Undertale. Looks different from my Undertale. <laughs> oh, now it does. I just got multiple images I can have. Okay. Um, so we have Antichamber that yeah. we still are want to play through. Um, I've beaten Braid, uh, I feel like you've played Oh yeah, I feel like I'm, like, not particularly uh, yeah. interested also in Braid uh, at this point. Like, I feel like Braid's, like, fairly, uh, as an analysis thing, right? Like, or as, yeah. like, a piece of literature, I think it's kind of fairly in and out. Uh, not to, like, hate on Braid or anything. Like, I think it's a good twist. I just think it's, like, not, like, a, yeah. you know, apart from it, it's not very, like, he, up to uh, it. Jonathan Blow's just really bad at writing oh he makes good like uh, like the witness there's these really pretentious like uh -huh. video game recordings you can find yeah and they just like talk about life and philosophy and oh stuff boy. and i'm like i just want puzzles i don't really care about your your yeah. overall plot. limbo is like a is a platforming game but i've heard it's uh -huh. it's it got some interesting stuff what is lovers in a dangerous space time? oh it's a fun co-op game oh yeah yeah um we've been playing at co-op you you should feel free to come to huh? yeah you and Lily should just play monster from it because i can laugh at you yeah. Oh my god, what is this? <laughs> it's is a, it like it's Monster a, Hearts? No, it's a, it's a dating sim. It's a dating Wait, sim. I would totally play a dating sim. Yeah. Uh, I think playing a dating sim on this would be really fun, actually. I have a lot of feelings about dating sims. Oh, well, we played Hotable Boyfriend, the pigeon oh, one. God. Yeah! And then we also I got to the, the, of... the New Game Plus part. Wait, wait, have you have you played it? I have. Okay, including the, the extra part. The yeah. Hurtful Boyfriend. Hurtful Boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. We played it. We we were waiting for K Kim to come back, but then oh we... God. No, no, we ha you were here, and he went to bed. He's had a flight test the next morning, right, so I couldn't... But we were just, like, freaking out, and we couldn't stop playing, because it was a lot. That's... Yeah, no, Hurtful Boyfriend is so good. Rob. Have you played Birdland also? Because that's... Kind of a dating sim. Oh, well, yeah. I'm not class. You know what we should play if we want to play a dating sim that I haven't played yet is Jurassic Heart, which is the dating sim in which oh, you are dinosaurs. a human, you date dinosaurs. Uh, and the people who are making it were gonna make another game called Cambrian Cuties, which is why oh. my social list is called Cambrian Cuties, which okay. was a Burgess Shale dating sim that was never made. I cry every day. Uh, Kenai wants us to let us know that Limbo is made by Danish devs. Ooh. 
Ooh, interesting. Mm-hmm. I don't know what Limbo is apart from that it's this. Yeah. Uh, and also, Meowers is excited about Monster Prom. Okay, I would totally freaking play Monster Prom. Yeah, so let's see. We have Antichamber, Limbo, uh, Mini Metro is something I've been saying. I have been playing Mini Metro a little bit because my family got really into Mini Metro because my dad's a city planner who's gotten, like, real into, like, caring about this game and if it's accurate or not. Yeah, actually, I've been wanting to play this, but I wanted to save it with you. But, like, yeah. if you've already been playing it, then I might just play this by myself. Yeah, I, th- I think okay. that, that seems... Uh, I'd be happy for either. Uh, Papers, Please is definitely something. I feel like trying to play something that was mostly a puzzle game on CMS Power Hour would be kind of fun, though. I definitely want to play Papers, Please. Ooh, I also have never played Papers, Please. Uh, I don't know if I do that at some point. The game inside is kind of I think Papers, Please may be a thing we should, like, save for, like, a... Rather than just, like, starting it as a jokey thing in the, like, second half of one of these. Like, I would like to do it just, like, dedicated two hours to Papers, Please. Maybe, like... Huh. Some future week. So Inside is a spiritual successor to Limbo. I've never heard of this game hmm. before. So that's interesting. Yeah. So so yeah. I think I think Papers Please will want to do like a more full playthrough. Yeah. I also want to show this to Brinkmo, which is ooh why. yeah yeah. Um, this is a fun jokey game. You you would uh-huh. like this? Okay. I... Asparto. Uh, Polly Bridge. This person um, has a good paper. But goddamn, this person super hot that is another game. Oh, this is the one where the this is the one where it's like a, a it's like things. time moves when you're moving. Time thing. moves when you're moving. Yeah, moves yeah. Because um, someone was talking to me a bunch about like the VR version of Super Hot and yeah. the other day. Oh my god, good guy. Okay, and about the strategy of making time move by just waving your arms back and forth, <laughs> like when you need to like just speed through a thing, you're just like yeah. Um. Okay. So for a game that we want to play, just like for for just like to kill time uh would... i would legitimately just start this monster problem thing okay can you guys log in to steam yeah okay um, um i'm gonna yeah oh. is monster problem a good dating sim i am enjoying it it has good humor okay i appreciate um, that and like that's most of what it's supposed to be like it's well written okay I'm, I'm down hot um, yeah, so we're gonna play Monster Prom. I'm gonna end the stream real quick so that I can change the uh, uh, title of what I'm playing. But I think it's six months. Three, four, five, Goodness. Six. And I think it's tomato sandwich. I, I'll leave. <laughs> Wait, you probably should say your password on stream. It's okay, it was a tomato sandwich. Okay. <laughs> um, um, but uh, what was it? Yeah, we will definitely be playing Papers, Please, and Super Hot, but I think, like, now for the last, like, 30 minutes, we're just going to be playing, like, a chiller game, because um, you also want a break from Undertale. Yeah, yeah. that'd be good. Um, but, uh, yeah, thank you for joining us on this. Mm-hmm. I out what my house we should uh, do a bunch of, we should do a week of, like, weird Twine game playthroughs. I think that would be fun. You have to compile them. Because yeah, I, I can I compile know. them. Okay. I can make you play them. Yeah, oh, 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 oh. The tables, the turn, the turn the <laughs> how, how turn turned. the tables, <laughs> how turn the tables have. Uh, <laughs> have you considered less vase? <laughs> Never. You know, when I made that, I don't remember when I made that. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quickly turn off the stream real quick and give me the keyboard. Yeah, I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna. All right, I'm gonna turn off the stream real quick, but I'll be back in like two seconds.